And last but not least, we're in uh, router three here. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're just going to go and uh, we're going to configure uh, router 1 since it's the hub. We'll configure router 1 first. And the first thing you want to do here is uh, if I were to go back to GNS3 and take a look here at the topology summary. See here that uh, router all these uh, routers are using their serial one zero interface. So that's the interface we're going to be configuring. So for router one, I'm going to go into interface serial one zero, and what I need to do first here is I need to specify. Um, that this interface is going to be using uh, frame relay uh, encapsulation. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and type in encapsulation frame relay and hit enter. Now what I need to do here on the router is I need to to map uh, what I'm going to be doing in this lab is I'm going to be using, uh, I'm going to be defining frame relay uh, static configurations here, static maps. So, first I'm going to define the IP address on the interface, which is 192.168.1.1. With a slash 24 subnet mask. And, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to to configure my uh, map statements. And I do this by specifying frame relay and then map. And then I'm going to map here. What I'm going to be mapping here is the IP addresses. So I'm going to map IP and then 192.168. 1.2 so I'm going to be mapping my uh, statically mapping my connection to router 2 first so frame relay map IP 192.168.1.2 then here I'm going to specify the data link connection identifier to map this IP address to which I'm going to map it to 102 And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now what you can see here is I got a bunch of other options I can do, like uh, broadcast will enable me to say if I'm running uh, later on, if I decide to run like a routing protocol, um, the broadcast statement is going to allow, you know, the uh, routing protocol, um, uh, the dynamic routing protocol, say OSPF or EIGRP or whatever to, you know, to uh, establish connections across. But I'm not going to wor be worried about that right now. I'm just going to show you guys how to con uh, how to configure the frame relay uh, uh, static map maps here. So with that statement, that should map my layer three address to my layer two Delsey. Again, to now what I'm going to do to uh, map uh, my connection to router 3 is do frame relay map IP, then 192.168.1.3. And then the Delsey I'm going to use for that connection to router 3 is 103. That's the local Delsey. Now we can verify this again. If we go back to GNS3, we go to the frame relay switch. And if we look, we can see here 
that we mapped router one to port one on the frame relay switch. Okay, and port one is saying it's got two mappings, right? It's got a mapping to 102 and 103. And on the other side of this mapping, we have the connections from router two to, uh, is mapped from two to 201 and router three is mapped to, from three to 301. Okay, the last thing we want to do on router one is we just want to do a no shut on the interface. And if we were to do a uh, show frame relay map, you can see here that this is going to give us the status of the local Delsies. And we can use this to troubleshoot the connection. As you can see here, I have it says inactive. When the Delsi is up and running and everything's good, you're going to see this uh, as active not inactive. You can see here also that I have defined this Delsi as static with my frame relay map IP command. Now what's important to bring up here um, is the concept of uh, inverse ARP which is the opposite of ARP, our address resolution protocol. Um, if you can remember, ARP is used uh, on Ethernet uh, connections to map the, uh, the layer 3 IP address to the uh, layer 2 MAC address. So inverse ARP then is where you have the layer 2 address and you're trying to map to the layer 3 address which as you can see here um, when we configure our DELCs we have the layer 2 uh, address which is our, our, our local DELCs and what inverse ARP will let us do is go out and create that uh, the mapping from the uh, layer 2 address what inverse ARP lets us do is create that the connection from the layer 2 address to the layer 3 address so again, ARP is, you have the layer 3 address and you're looking for the layer 2 address. And inverse ARP is where you have the layer 2 address and you're looking for the layer 3 address.